Good evening, everyone. You are live with us. Sorry, we've had a few technical glitches. Surprise, surprise. Mm. But you're live with me, Lucy Sampson, and the amazing M.W. Craven, otherwise known as Mike. Good evening, Mike. Good evening, everyone. This is a very special night for you. It is a very special day for you because we are here to celebrate the launch of The Curator. Tilly and Poe, book three. How's your day been so far then, Mike? <laughs> uh, well, I, I did an uh, interview with Graham Smith uh, under his John Ryder name at one o'clock. So it, it's been pretty much a work day for me, like these like these events so always are. The difference is I'm at home this time, which yeah. I'm, normally, I'm normally in London for it. So, um, yeah, it's been fun. Social media has been a bit... Um, Exciting today. It's been, <laughs> it's been very lively, hasn't mm. it? Lots of conversations going on, lots of people talking about the curator, so it's and, great. And a lot of the Amazon orders came in today, even though they were threatening not to deliver them until the 9th, so yeah. that, that was nine. Because when people started saying that, I actually put, I ordered one myself just to see, and it said the 9th today, and I got it today, uh -huh. so I've, put it in, I've got a quarantine shelf now, like a COVID shelf. <laughs> <laughs> very sensible, very sensible. You park them there for a few days then and just to we're, let we're everything die down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got the stage of washing fruit now. It's, I mean, it's just a bit, you feel a bit silly doing it, but then you think if you catch it, but the one time you didn't do it, then you're going to feel even sillier, aren't you? So. Yeah, it would be sod's law, wouldn't it? It really would. Well, before we get too carried away, I just wanted to give a couple of people a shout out who are special to you, Mike, and that's Mary Jackson. And Simon Cowdroy. Now, we hope that Simon's alarm clocks have worked because Simon's in Australia. And this is about 4 a.m. Simon's time, isn't it, Mike? Yeah. It, uh, Simon flew over um, from, I think he's just outside Melbourne. Uh, uh -huh. He flew over to Covent Garden for the last launch, which I thought was going a bit over and, the, wow. over and above. And uh, Mary's my mother-in-law, and she um, was wanting to watch this and was keen to join the group and it was all it's all, all very exciting so i would normally watch my swearing but um <laughs> on, uh, when i did the booker your one i was told no swearing because this is going to their website but um right I'll, I'll keep it down to a minimum i promise right well i best warn my dad because he's just joined the group tonight so hi dad alan thanks for joining us hi alan <laughs> mike and Mike and I will try and be on our best behaviour for everyone who might be offended. <laughs> so, where would you like to start with this, Mike? Do you want to start with a few questions from members and then we can dip into some of the other things that you've got planned for us yeah, tonight? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I, I will, I will, I'm not going to tell you what the questions are, but I do have a list of 11 questions. I'm just going to throw them in every now and then. It's going to be a who answers first win. So, I've got 11 prizes ranging from um a proof of the creator paperbacks um the new puppet show which only Ooh, came in today that looks Rating lovely to some just stupid little pamphlet things giveaway things so they'll be for the easy questions some of the questions are easy and you'll know that the people who've read the books will know them immediately some mm -hmm. are a bit tougher so right. you might need to dredge your memories for them all right but we'll, we'll, look we'll just play we'll just play by here and see what happens we will do. And then maybe a little bit later, shall we tell them about the other competition that you yeah, and Tam... Yeah, that would be fun, yeah, yeah. I had no. great fun doing that. Brilliant. Well, well, we'll keep everyone in suspense about that a little bit longer because that's a lot of fun. I think everyone's going to enjoy that as well. So we'll start with a few questions. Now, to be fair, Mike, they're not all Poe and Tilly questions. That's fine. Your, uh, your other books, the Fluke, Avis and Fluke books, they've attracted a lot of attention as well. So we've got a few questions around those as well. If you're happy, super books, if you're happy to yeah, answer yeah. Them. So we've got one from one of our admin team, Jason Kelly. Jason wanted to know, when did you actually write the Averson Fluke books? Um, I wrote the start of Burial Gown in 2013. Right. Uh, and I entered it. I, I wrote the first 3,000 words and I entered it in the debut dagger in 2013, which had an end of Jan closing date, and I was shortlisted. And at the event, uh, an agent asked to see the whole thing, so I said, right, it'll j I'm just a couple of way weeks away from um, finishing it. And I got mm -hmm. back and I thought, right, now, now I need to write the, the, 
the next 97,000 words because that, that had been all I then. Uh, so yeah, it was finished in 2013. And in 2014, right. I met my publisher. Yeah. And I got a contract in 2014. It was published in 2015 originally. Cool. Excellent. Which leads on nicely. And I know you've been asked this an awful lot and you're going to keep on getting asked about it. But in particular, Jeannie Feast, and I know Jeannie's in Australia, so she might not be with us at the moment. But Jeannie did want to know if there are any more Averson flute books planned. And that's a question from me as well. Yeah, I get it. I get it quite <laughs> um, not, I, I know how I will write it. I've got the plot sort of roughly figured out. Um, there's no yeah. immediate plans. So it won't be for a couple of years at least. There's far too right. much happening with Poe. At the minute, some stuff out that I'm not allowed to say. I'm strictly involved from saying um, exactly like that. Mm. But I, I would like to finish. I, I, I think he deserves to um, have his story told. I can't just leave him languishing where he is. Oh minute. no! I mean, the, I suppose at the end of Body Breaker, there was a sort of a conclusion. You, you know, you did kind of wrap it up. I don't want to give any spoilers to people, so I'm trying. I am being a bit vague, so sorry, people. But you know, you saw Fluke reach a certain point in his life, and you could quite happily leave him there. But of course, there is the option to expand it, which I think is, that's that's why so many of us who've read and enjoyed them would like uh, to see well, more. I mean, the, the reality is, I originally planned it as a three arc set of, uh, I, I was yeah. just going to keep on going but the original arc was three stories so uh -huh. I had book three all completely panned out but when my agent said I signed because I signed with my agent after book two after Body Break right. and he said I want you to write a completely new series I see um, well actually originally he said can you just rewrite Body Break as the first in a new series and I said in the end it'll just be easier for me to write a new one from scratch so the yeah. plot of the puppet show would have been the third Averson flute book uh -huh. So I'd been setting up characters all the way from the very first short stories to take up key roles what is in what is now the puppet show. So yeah. if, if you know the characters in the Fluke series intimately, you'll probably figure out which characters were going to play which roles in, in the puppet show. Yeah. But when it came to the puppet show, because I couldn't just write the same book with um, the same type of characters, just change names. And that's where Tilly came from, actually, because Tilly is sort of the exact opposite of um, your fictional boyfriend. Uh, Matt <laughs> One of my fictional boyfriends. <laughs> <laughs> he's up there with Jack Reacher, so he's in good company. <laughs> I mean, that'd be an interesting fight, wouldn't it? Matt Towler versus Jack Reacher. It would make an interesting story. Maybe we could get you and Lee. Well, no, it won't be Lee now, will it? Because he's passing over the mantle to his brother Andrew. So maybe we could, that's something for the future, Mike which I'm sure there probably is a question in amongst all of these, which I hadn't quite got to. Oh, yes. I think Pauline Render Byron asked a question that if you could co-write a book with any author, living or deceased, who would it be? Um, I, well, me and uh, Amit Dand, A.A. Dand, have, have said that yeah. we would like to write a story together, because we think it would oh, be quite cool. good fun to put Poe yeah. in Bradford's, in the Harry Birdie's world. So that would be quite interesting. But if I could choose anyone, I would write, uh, I'd co-author a book with um, Terry Pratchett and put um, Poe into Ankh-Wore Pork, solving crimes <laughs> involving dragons and dwarfs and the, Assass <laughs> the Assassin's Guild and the Thieves' Guild and the Beggars' Guild. Oh, that would be brilliant. Stuff. Yeah, it would be, it would be a lot of fun. So much you could write there. Well, there you go, Pauline. You've had that answer to your question. Let's see if we can find some other ones for you, because Pauline's given us quite a few. We've had quite a lot come in. Let's see. Oh, well, this this was a question from Michael John Sims, which I think you, well, you haven't quite answered, but any chance that Fluke and Poe may ever bump into each other or work together? Um, it's an interesting idea, actually. And I, yeah. I asked my editor when I was writing book four, because book four is uh -huh. completely written now. It's edited, it's copy edited, it just went into proofread, um, and then the, the advanced copies will be going out, which is extraordinary, considering it's a year away. Um, yeah. And I said, can I merge the two worlds? Because it seems a bit unlikely in Cumbria that the two cops wouldn't know about each other. Yeah. So Fluke does actually get a mention in in uh, Poe 4. But I do actually 
bring a character from Body Breaker into Pope 4, and it's um, Steel oh, Eyes yeah. Stan, the bouncer with... Who, who the ball-bearing eyeball. Ball-bearing in his eye socket, because <laughs> um, he's, lose, he's lost so many glass eyes when he fights. <laughs> Um, so he's brilliant. now the bouncer, and if you remember um, the pub, the dog, in yeah, uh, Black Summer, that that really uh -huh. pub, he's now the bouncer at the dog, and Poe has a run in with them. And it's um, it's quite a funny uh -huh. scene. Oh, that's going to be. He's got a head like a badly shaved testicle. <laughs> There's no answer to that, Mike. Is no, no, no. <laughs> I don't Take a joke, thing, I don't know if there's such a thing as a well-shaved testicle, to be honest. <laughs> Who knew this would take this turn or so soon into your launch month? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I don't know. How did you come up with the characters of Poe and Tilly? That's a question from Robin Barker. Robin says they are so utterly brilliant. I mean, I think somebody else asked as well. I will have a look while you're answering about, did it, is it anybody you know who inspired those characters? The, so how did you come up with them? Yeah, I, I mean... The, the pole character is, is sort of a, a version of the flute character because it had to be because the, the story had already been written. Yeah. But because I had the opposite of Towler, uh, I, well, hey, the opposite, so I had the opposite gender for a start, so I had a woman, and I thought someone who's sweet and naive and innocent would, would be yeah. quite a, a good foil for Poe. But Tilly was nowhere near the way Tilly was uh, in, in the puppet show. The, uh -huh. the original version I had... Written her, she was far more streetwise than, than she is now, yeah. And far more well, she's basically a, a version of sort of a much uh, quite quite a close character to Elizabeth Sander, I suppose. Quite, um, a bit yeah. Like and Poe, uh -huh. Poe, Poe didn't have a name at that point. And when I right. figured out his name, which was someone I was talking to, misheard me say Washington Post and said, What's the Washington Poe? And I thought, uh -huh. that's, my, that's my name, that's my name. But you can't call a Cumbrian Washington without explaining. So I yeah. got a backstory for him. He became, and it's a very sad backstory. As, as you it know. is, yeah. And he became a lot darker than I'd originally intended. So I had to go back and rewrite Tilly as well. Yeah. To be a, a much lighter character. Yeah, to give some balance so that's, to that's, that's, that's why we had the, um, the, the dark and the light sort of thing. Yeah. And it's, um, when, I, when I wrote it, I thought, I've actually got something here because... Her, her it allowed me it allowed me two things. One to get some humour in without forcing it, without just having yeah. someone tell jokes. Because Tilly's yeah. natural honesty, uh, it, it's That's... funny sometimes. It, it, it is, and also it allows me because I, I made Poe a sort of luddite on purpose. It allows me to explain things to Poe, yeah, for the readers that perhaps. Aren't immediately there'll be some people who are technically capable who will fully understand what Tilly says the first time. I am not yeah. one of them. So I have to <laughs> get um, some guy to some guy will. Um, I've, I've, there's a guy in Cumbria who um, Tilly's it up for me. So he puts things in the most fun, incredibly complicated ways, and then uh -huh. I eventually dumb it down. So I, I have both things. So when Tilly says these outrageously complicated things, I can just have Poe sort of looking at him. So you need to. Give me the crayon version, that type of thing. I know. <laughs> like so that. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a literary device, really. I mean, it's it's a, it's a it's a trick. Yeah, no, it's it's great. It works really well. Oh, let's see. I'm just looking for some more. I'm just trying to group some together if I can. I'm going to have a slight pop over to something a little bit lighter. And this is a question from Steve Munoz, and hopefully Steve's with us because I know he's in California. Um, it's just popping back briefly to the Averson flute books, and mm -hmm. Steve says that. In those books, you mention that he's listening to punk while driving. Which groups are his favourites to drive by? And then he sort of rolls that in with, does music influence you as a writer? And what are you listening to most? Now, I think a lot of us know you do like your music. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> all of that, I mean, Mike. Music's been such a huge part of my life since I can remember. I mean, I remember... Yeah. Uh, and I was watching, just before we came in there, I was watching a Boomtown Rats documentary because they were one of my favourite <laughs> bands when I was little. Stiff uh -huh. Fingers, I've got a T-shirt on now. And I was chatting to Jake Burns today, but, I mean, which my life has taken a very weird thing. <laughs> I, I, I did a book signing um, for the bookshop, the one when I signed your book, you see, on uh -huh. Sunday. And I happened to have a Stiff Little Fingers T-shirt on. Jake Burns saw it and asked me for permission to share it. 
Um, and I thought, well, this is weird. Wow. I'm asking me to, 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 to share things. So it's a different little thing, certainly. I mean, I mean, my, my protagonist's taste of music is invariably... My Yours. taste of music, because it's just yeah. easier for me to remember that way. It's just different little fingers, the damned, all the main mainstream punk mute, punk bands, yeah. and some American bands, Dropkick Murphys, some big fan of. Just, we just came back from London just before COVID started, actually. It was in February. We're at Ali uh-huh. Pond. Um, and Iron Maiden, obviously. And this yeah. is a lot of Iron Maiden now, because I've, they're the band I've, I've seen most. We flew to Vegas last year to, to see them at the MGM, which was a lot of fun. Yeah, Vegas is really expensive now. It's about twelve, thirteen pound a pint. It's... Oh God! I won't, be, I won't be going back anytime soon. <laughs> oh, Stephen's with us. He's just said he's here. He's letting us both know. So hopefully, Stephen, there you go. You've got some answers there. So uh, do you do you listen to music when you write, Mike? Yeah, or I, do I, you... can't, I can't write in silence. I can't. Um, I'm very loud either. It, it, it depends yeah. what I'm doing when I'm actually writing. A draft, then mm. I have to have it on reasonably quietly. When I'm editing, because yeah. I'm in a different part of my brain, then then I I can have it on a bit louder. But I've got like playlists with like two and a half thousand songs on, so I'll just put like me editing playlist on, and yeah. that'll keep me going for a few weeks and yeah. and things. But yeah, I I can't not. It's it's funny actually because um during now we're, in, we're sort of locked down. My my wife Jo is working from home yeah. as well. Uh-huh. So oh. <laughs> we have to have a bit, of, and she's working in the office. So we have to have a bit of um, uh, compromise on. So she li- she likes to listen to Radio Six, um, right? And uh, but she also likes most of the music that I like. She like, which, which is um, which which is okay because she goes to all the gigs with me, which is yeah, which is fun. Um, and she's a big Stiff Little Fingers fan now, which, which is oh brilliant. Um, but she dances at the concert, which is like weird. So, I, I go <laughs> with a you don't, friends. Mike. <laughs> I would sort of stand there looking all like. Mm. You don't. You don't pogo. Not in traditional punk to, style. I used, get, I used to get in the mosh pit. I'm too old now. <laughs> You're never too old, Mike. You're never too old. <laughs> Fab. Well, there you go, Stephen. Thanks for joining us from LA. Oh, now you mentioned about Tilly's jargon and about. You asked Poe asked for the crayon version. I hope this question is going to be understandable. I might have to Google a quick translation unless this, you've got this it. Is the one with the, the four letter acronym? I Tilly is. I this was from. <laughs> it's from Senga Albertin. And Senga asked, well, she says, Tilly is a big fan of LCMS. That's it. How much research did you have to do? regarding its accuracy and applications in crime detection? And do you have scientific consultants? Do I, I need to Google LCMS again? <laughs> I, I, I really don't know what that is. I was, I was racking my brains. I was like... It's I, the spectrometry chromograph. I did look it up uh, earlier. The, um, but the, I... Uh, is, that, is that from the puppet show when she used that mass spectrometry... Thing to, yes, I, I believe to that. Here we go. Let's put it up. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Senga. <laughs> I, um, it, see, I mean, I mean, what what a lot of people sort of seem to forget is I wrote the puppet show in 2016, so I don't know Gosh. it very well. Yeah. But when people are talking to me about the creator, I think well, I wrote that nearly three years ago. I don't know that book particularly well either. Yeah. Um, because it's out today, people think, well, I must know it intimately, which I, I, I don't. But, yeah, the, the science is, is fun. I, mean, I, I I do try and get the science right. Mm-hmm. But I admit I got the science wrong in the puppet show with the drug that is used. Oh. Um, right. Absolutely. Uh, there was a doctor contacted me last week thinking she'd be the first person. She wasn't. She was about the fifth person. Um, oh, God. But... Uh, Invariably, I will get the I will get the science as right as I can. The, the police procedure stuff is normally correct. It's cor- as correct yeah. as it can be. It can't be uh-huh. totally correct, otherwise it'll be too laborious <clears throat> and long winded. The yeah. um, but I, for, for example, the scientific problem in Black Summer, I, I had when my niece was working at uh, was sorry was doing an undergraduate degree at Oxford at the time in right. one of the biological disciplines. I can't remember exactly mm-hmm. which one it was. So she checked that out for me and then took it to one of her professors, actually, who said, yes, that would work, which was a relief, oh, actually, because I wanted to give Poe and Tilly an impossible problem, which I did, but I didn't have actually a solution at that point. So I had to sort of yeah. work, work backwards. 
So, but and, and for the computer stuff, I have a guy in Carlisle who's a friend of my brother-in-law who I met at um, a gig actually, who checks it all for me and says, "No, you can't." Yeah. Have that. I come up with these really like I'll, I'll just go on Wikipedia and say, "Right, that's a really cool sounding name or something," <laughs> and I say, "No, it's," and he'll just give it a, a boring name and all of that. Not like it's not very sexy. Yeah, yeah, because Poe might understand that. <laughs> Normally, when I'm doing the technical stuff, I need something that Poe just wouldn't understand. Yeah, well, that's it because that's that's Tilly's entry point, isn't it? it that's it, it, where it is, it is, it is. he just comes in and she lights up the room and she's brilliant and makes everyone feel stupid. So, <laughs> in a nice way. Absolutely. No, she is, she is a super super character. So, Senga, you've got that. We got round there. Senga apparently uses that pretty much every day in her work. That flashed up on the screen. So, uh, lucky you, Senga. I'm glad you understand it. <laughs> I'd, love, I'd love to be at that level. I don't know. Okay, we've got a question from Mike Hemming. Mike has asked, who has the final say on the title of your books? Is it you or the publisher? And then there's a little extra of, and are there any co any title copyright issues like, say, music groups? So that's, I guess, more within the body of the work. But what about the title, Mike? Do you come up with those or does somebody else? I, I come up with them then. I'm told I can't have it. That's pretty much <laughs> it. It's the publisher who has the final say. Right. Um, and the final say on the cover. So I, I get consulted, you like this? And if they say, if I say... I would rather have that. I'll say, no, that wouldn't work because they know certain things. The title, right. my agent says I'm hard work titles. He just says, just you write the books and we'll come up with the titles. Ah. But, um, for the fourth one, which is a good example, I'd been to see a band called the anti Noah League, who the punks oh. amongst us will, will know of. Yeah. In Carlisle. And they had a new album out that night. Oh, right. That, or that week. It was weird. And I, uh -huh. I didn't even know. I've been an anti Noah League fan for a while. And I didn't even know about it. But there was a song called The 13 Rap Theory. Right, ah, that's a great title. Uh, yeah, to get back into the second part of that question, uh, titles aren't copyrighted, so you can use song titles. Uh, song titles, you just can't use lyrics. So yeah. I thought, well, I'll, I'll use that, and I built an entire plot around that title. And then they said, mm -hmm. you can't have that, so I changed it to the 13th rap. And they said, they can't uh -huh. have that either because they won't, supermarkets won't take a book if it's got a rat in the title or cockroach mm -hmm. or anything. That sort of, right. you, you know, the, that, yeah. that sort of, um, that make that might make, make people just put little the, the word rat in their head when they're in. Yeah, the I suppose in a food shop. shop. Yeah. So eventually, um, I said, right, I had a title in my head called the Bad Beat. So right. I'll, I'll put that in. I'll, I'll, I'll call uh -huh. it the Bad Beat, and then I, I sort of um, wrote a half a page on why it was called the Bad Beat, and it's something to do with conductors and good orchestras and bad orchestras. Very interesting, I thought. <laughs> no, you can't have bad beat. It's too musical. Um, so I, I sort of like, sort of it, and I said, right, you can just have um, what I was going to call Poe Six, which is Dead Ground for a joke, right. actually, because I didn't particularly like yeah. the title. And so oh, oh. Right, we'll, have, we'll have that. So it's called Dead Ground. I'm with. Um, oh, so yeah, and, but you, you can't copyright um, t the titles of TV. Any any title you can't copyright. So. Yeah, otherwise, that's otherwise why books today will just be sort of like um, computer generated passwords because everything's pretty much being, yeah. being used. Yeah, because you do then, hear about that. Because I released Black Summer, then a few weeks later, Netflix released Black Summer, the, the zombie program. Oh, zombie right. Series, so. uh -huh. Which is good, actually, because people have bought Black Summer thinking it was um, a spin off from the TV. So I, I, I saw this right? one, something, not enough zombies in it. Oh, there's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no zombies in it. Never mind. Not enough. Well, is it gives you sales. Who cares? <laughs> Go on then. Quite another question from Robin Barker. Which was your best villain to write about? While well, we're talking about zombies and bad things. Um... I, I I think my favourite villain is still Jared Keaton, the chef. Yeah. Um, I, I think he just got under people's skin for some reason. I think that's because he wasn't on screen much, um, mm. and he had an affected French accent, and he was smug, and um, he 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 sort of had everything, and he he, he sort of threw it all away, and um, yeah, so he, he was the most fun to write. But the the book I'm writing now is called The Botanist, and that's Poe Five. 
Right. He's quite a cool, he's quite a cool villain because he can seemingly walk through walls. He actually warns his victims he's going to kill them by poison. Mm -hmm. He tells them what poison he's going to use to kill them. And he gives yeah. them weeks. He gives them notice. And no matter what precautions they take, he still kills them. Um, so it's uh, see he's quite cool, but he, he's not on the screen at all yet. Just right at the start. Uh -huh. The poem, and poem that's, on the bottom that's, that yet. that's not going to be out until what twenty twenty two possibly. Yeah. And the villain it's in still post six. Away. That sounds so good. The, the villain in post six, which will be out in two thousand twenty three, which is called the Third Light, um, which is he's about a sniper. Who, who's just yeah. going around the country killing people? He's going to be quite a nasty bit of work as well, as you can imagine. Uh -huh. um, Gosh, so we're, we've just seen the release of Post 3, and you're talking about Post 6. Are there more planned after that, Mike? Have you got any more thoughts? I, I, I'm, I'm sure got, some people are going to be some rough more. ideas, but I mean, it's just the way my mind works. It's actually quite handy because, because I'm always thinking at least a couple of books ahead. It means I can plant things in books that might not have any bearing on the current book but do in one or two books yeah later yeah so the, the, there was something in black summer which happened in black summer and my editor says this is a nice scene but we, we can just leave we can leave it we, we can miss it out completely i said uh -huh. it's, it's not relevant to black summer but it absolutely will be in the curator so yeah. it absolutely has to stay in um, yeah and once i've explained it they're, they're, they're fine with that but it does allow me yeah. to sort of concentrate on on, on the sort of story arcs. And I, I know Sergi actually asked about the um, novella, because I am planning to do a novella yes. between books four and five, which will tie up Poe's parentage. That's ah, that sort yes. of ongoing thing. So that'll be sort of tied up in a sort of 20,000 word novella. It'll have to be, actually, because I'm writing the bottom of this as if it has been right. sort of solved up and, and cleared up. So when do you think was when we do you see that novella then, Mike? Did you say sorry? I, I'm imagining. What's I think it's about March 2000. And, so it's my dog in the background there. Um, <laughs> March 2022, probably. It'll okay, be out yeah. before the botanist. It'll have to be. But I'm making a note of that. I'm going to hold you to that now. <laughs> Paul gets the he gets the final piece of the puzzle in Dead Ground, which allows yeah. him to then start investigating what he needs to investigate. Brilliant. Well, that sounds really good. Um, while we're just talking about the spin-off novella, you have, you've, you've told us before and you gave us a taster of a short story at the beginning of May with uh, Why Don't Sheep Shrink. Yes. Um, Dave, David Gilchrist would like to know when the book of short stories will be coming out. I may have asked you before, but we'll put it back out there again. Uh, September the 3rd. September the 3rd. There you go, David. September days. the 3rd. How many, Mike? 92. 92 Someone asked me this morning, so that's why I know. Um, <laughs> and it'll be you were three short, just three short stories. Why Don't uh -huh. Sheep Shrink will be the middle one. Um, and there'll be two sort of more serious, sombre ones, bookends uh -huh. on either side. And I think it'll be a couple of quid, something something like that. I know well, that, um, I spoke to the cover, the cover guy this morning, actually. And he's uh -huh. on the cover. So as soon as the cover's done, I suspect it'll go up on Amazon. And that'll be an e-book. I don't think there's any plans to put it into print. Ah, right. You've you read my mind. That was going to be my next question. So it will be e-book only. Okay. Let me just... I just nodded there. That was my wife out, off screen asking if I want another drink. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please, Joe. Can I have one too? <laughs> I wish you could send it down to me. No, I'm all right, honestly. <laughs> Just bring the bottle oh. I've got my bottle on there. <laughs> right, let's see. Do you want to do any of your bits, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, it's after half past seven. We've been having so much fun. We've, we've done half an hour already. Right, so I've got... A, I, I can't see any comments on here. So um, have you got the comments on your side? Uh, I will see if I can get them up on my laptop, Mike, because I've got that open next to me. So that's where my head will be going. So fingers crossed. If not, Caroline, maybe you can help us out in the background and maybe pin up the fastest fingers first on this one. Because I think that's what you want to do, isn't it, Mike? This is going to be a yes, question so for everyone. This is for a copy of Black Summer, and it's a Black Summer question. What is the name of the restaurant in Black Summer? <gasps> oh. Yeah, 
you're, you're not allowed to shout out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame um, I can't. Not enter. <laughs> right, what have I got here? So that was for that. Um, so this is an, adv- an old advanced copy of The Puppet Show, which has just been gathering dust in my house. So this is a, quite a cool little gift, because these are very rare. These. Um, and the question yeah. is, what is the name of Poe's house on um, on Shapfell? So we'll just have them to start with. They're, they're quite tough questions, Em. Well, Everyone's gone I, away to find their book copies, Mike, and to double check. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I know the answer. <laughs> as long as you know the answer, that's the main thing. Because you'll have to say whether or not anybody's right. Oh, anyway, dear. Is, uh, a, a nice little oh, bit of Iron Maiden group Oh, fab. I was wondering if you'd have some of that on the go. <laughs> it had to be done. Just looking to see, just having a quick refresh while you're refreshing yourself, just to see if I can see anything come up. But Caroline has said, oh, right, we have. Unfortunately, I can't see who's answered it just yet. Give me a moment, but we have an answer, Mike. Okay. I think you can see it. Right, oh, it looks like... Oh, oh so now. slow. Yes, that is absolutely correct. Now, the thing is that we've got two people at the same time, so somebody's going to have to tell me which one was first. And Herdwick Croft they... is the answer to the other question as well, so they're both right. Okie dokie. God, they're flying in. We've had a few. Pauline Render Byron was one of the earlier ones. I seem to lose half of the comments, unfortunately, on my stream. See if I can pick them up somewhere else. There well, was we'll another... Be, we'll better we'll pick them up... Um... Well, Sue McGrath was first, according to Caroline. Ah, Sue McGrath. Thanks, Caroline, for that. Sue McGrath, there you go. You've won the name of the restaurant question. And we just, we've had answers for Herdwick Croft. Oh, gosh, they're flying through. I just don't know who was first because they've come through so thick and thick. Liz Nippereth. Liz She's Nippereth. Nippereth. That's my bloody <laughs> She's what? She's your sister. My sister. <laughs> Liz, I'm sure you have only got to ask your brother for a copy, my love. Come on. You can't be that mean, surely. <laughs> Honestly, she's in this book club in Devon, and she says, oh, can we have some copies of such and such? And I've like, done uh-huh. 15 copies before. I, I get some before. I get them sometimes. <laughs> Liz, I'm sorry. That's that's cheating. You should have identified yourself, you naughty woman. <laughs> Don't worry, we will find somebody with that one then. We need to look for the the second quickest. Sorry, Caroline, we can't have Liz Nipra. Sorry, Liz. I just, I can't, I'm losing half of the comments on here. I'm sorry, Caroline, I'm really relying on you in the background. Telling me I've got 140 comments and I can only see five of them, so I don't know what's going <laughs> on there. <laughs> Damn. Oh, let's see, I've just had a message flash up from Caroline. Right. Tamsin Furtado. Tamsin Furtado. You are the winner with Herdwick Croft. Is that and Tamsin Sum- from uh, Kenilworth? Pardon? Is that the uh, Tamsin from Kenilworth? No, 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 no. Tamsin Rosewell. We will get on to Tamsin Rosewell. Right. I'm sure she's already watching. We'll get to that when you're ready, Mike. So we've done two. Okay. Do you want some more questions from here, or do you want me to talk about your other competition, Mike? Is this a good yeah, point? Yeah, go, go for it now, yeah, yeah, because it's quite a cool thing, isn't it? I will do my best. I only became familiar with this yesterday, so forgive me, folks. But by some strange twist of fate that wasn't had nothing to do with me, Mike has been talking to this lady, Tamsin Rosewell, who runs Kenilworth Books in Warwickshire. They're an independent bookseller. And Mike has... I believe, done an awful lot of work on this. So bravo, Mike. But between them, they've come up with a game of Craven Cluedo. So hashtag Craven Cluedo, everyone. And uh, there are, excuse me, sorry, shuffling my papers newsreader style. Mike has written 10 clues, everyone. And one will be posted each day. I'm going to give you the first one in a moment. And uh, so this, you're going to work these clues out. After today... Tamsin Rosewell, who is a member in our group, everyone, Tamsin will be posting another clue per day at 7 p.m. UK time. And uh, she will also probably pop a link to her bookshop's website because she is going to compile the clues there 
so that if somebody unfortunately comes to this far too late on clue six or something, they can catch up and still take part. So Tamsin will pop some more information in her posts. So, so, uh, so there's, there's, ten, there's going to be 10 clues over 10 days. Thanks, Mike. Um, the, first letter, got... the first letter of the answer will be the letter that you take. Then, ah. So at the end of the 10 days, you'll have 10 letters, which will be a, a word scramble or an anagram, whatever you want to call it. And yes. You will unscramble that crossword style or whatever, or pointless style, I think, will be the best way. And that will, uh -huh. um, that will give you the answer. And I think there's a 30 pound book token at the end of this. So it's, it's quite a cool prize. That's it. Yes, Tamsin is offering up a 30 pound book token, as you say, that you can either spend physically in her shop. She can take orders by phone or email and she can post that. She doesn't want to exclude anybody. So it really will be open to everyone who's watching tonight. So also, just one, one last thing. We'll see. Yeah, and sure. Also, these are you don't actually have to have read the books. If you read the books, you'll be you will have an advantage but all the clues in the books can be uh, worked out. Um, all the, sorry, all the clues aren't necessarily, you, you don't need to have read the books to, to get them. Okay, don't. This is, uh, and if anybody's got a particular love of Cumbria, that will also help. So, the very first clue, everyone, for tonight. The CWA Gold Dagger winning The Puppet Show involves a killer who immolates his victims in some of Cumbria's 63 stone circles. This stone circle, arguably the most atmospheric and dramatically sighted of all the British stone circles, has views of Helvellyn as a backdrop. So you need the, to work out the answer to that one. <laughs> Put your hand down, you. And you need to work out your answer and keep that first letter safe. So I'll read it one more time for everyone. The CWA Gold Dagger winning the puppet show involves a killer who immolates his victims in some of Cumbria's 63 stone circles. This stone circle, arguably the most atmospheric and dramatically sighted of all the British stone circles, has views of Helvellyn as a backdrop. So there you go, folks. That's your starting clue for Craven Cluedo. Keep your eyes in the group for posts from Tamsin Rosewell, as she will be giving you another clue. There will be nine more to come, and uh, she will also pop some details in about how you can catch up if you need a memory refresher of any previous clues. And uh, they will sort out the prize. So that's going to be brilliant. And it's, it's just such a weird quirk of fate that it happened to be my hometown bookshop that Tamsin owns. So really bizarre because yeah, yeah I mean, that we, was we, were pl we were planning to do a, uh, plan to do an event um yes I, I was i was going to be doing a, a tour this this year uh -huh. and obviously um the plague stopped it so yeah um, she got in touch and said uh -huh. do you mind i had this wacky idea originally it was about poisons because i'd been talking to her about yes. um the botanist yeah so there must have been some cross white or whatever anyway, she, but she was going to have like a load of scientific questions. Uh -huh. um, but so I think this is, uh, it's, so it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of fun, I think, because some of the questions are dead easy, if particularly yeah. the older series, uh -huh. but, and, and some of them are a bit more, a bit more difficult, but they're all eminently discoverable. I mean, as long as, long as you've got oh, access to the internet. Oh, it's brilliant. No, it's really good. And, and we're more than happy to be supporting another independent bookshop absolutely, as well. Absolutely. And it's International and it really, Book Week soon, um, so yeah. back end of the month. So I'm, I'm doing a signing, I think, for them um, towards the back end. So I'll share details of that when I have it. Oh, yes. I've, I've already given Tamsin permission to share that. So later on in the month, folks, keep an eye out for something else coming from Tamsin and Mike. It will all be posted about in the group. So with regard to signing, as Mike mentioned. So there we go. That's that. Let's go back to a few more questions then. I'm, I'm going to do the uncomfortable one because, unfortunately, not everyone saw you on the panel back at the beginning of May. Okay. And um, there has been a question here. Oh, yes. Shruthi P.S. or P.S. Um, well, it's, 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 there's, a bit of, there's a few questions in one here, Mike, so bear with me. Firstly, mm -hmm. she's asked, who do you think would be the best actors to play Poe and Tilly? Do you ever see Poe and Tilly being more than friends? That was the one we did touch on before. 
Um, oh, that was it. She says, oh, I have so many questions. But then she stopped there. So, Shruti, there's your two. <laughs> I should probably just thought, oh, got a bit excited. So TV-wise, have you had, or film-wise, have you had any actors in mind? Do you visualise anybody in those roles, Mike? It, it, this, this, this comes up every now and then. and It will do. I, I, I can't answer it properly. And for the reason is, in it was optioned for TV uh, before the book, a year, more than a year before the book was published by Studio Lambert, who, who have... Um, a very good track record of producing high quality, quite high quality drama. They told me at that initial meeting who they had planned for Poe and who they had planned yeah. for Tilly, and they're both sort of household, household names. Um, what the the guy who they got who, who they want to play Poe is um, well known British actor, um, most last lastly seen playing one of the major roles in Game of Thrones. The Ooh. female playing Tilly had a major role in Downton Abbey. Uh-huh. So, so that's who I see when I write the stories now, and I can't, I can't get them sort of out of my head. As for whether Poe and Tilly will be romantically involved, <laughs> almost certainly not. No. Um, I can remember the look of horror well on no, your face when I asked I'm, you that I'm, the last time. Oh. Sort of, I, 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 I don't know. I, it was funny actually because I could quite see Tilly and Towler being quite a funny little relationship. Um, no, but Tilly, Tilly no. and Poe, they're far too, they're far too close. Um, you just, you, yeah, just don't be jealous, Lizzie. Um, <laughs> I, 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 I do have plans for Poe, Poe's love life, and that was on instructions of my agent who said you need to let, let Poe him have. Have, have a relationship every now and then. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm sort of touching on that in Poe 5. In fact, I'm going to give him a love life in Poe 5. I, th- I think it would be quite interesting to give Tilly a boyfriend at some point because I think yes. that would produce all sorts of That question's come up humor. somewhere. Um, I'm sure I, some... I, I, I'd be interested yeah. to see what, how Poe would react to Tilly having a boyfriend because he wouldn't be jealous, but I think he'd be quite protective, almost like... Yeah, um, almost like, like a big brother sort of yeah. protecting figure, almost father-like but not, more like big brother protection sort of armour. Sorry, I was trying to let you have a drink then, Mike, so... No, I thought, oh, because in, in, my, in my mind, they're about nine or ten years apart in age, so right. they are probably they are probably in the Big Brother, little sister sort of. Um, if you get, I mean, it's a bit. Cliche, that's their sort that's, of bond, rather than rather than a dad and daughter type thing. Yeah. Yes, I, ha- I must admit, I hadn't seen them as father and daughter sort of figures. So, but I, I understand their their friendship, and I I know I've said it before, but I do have to say it. You. You write brilliant relationships, Mike. You really do, and your your characters for me are very relatable. You, I like your women characters in particular, your female characters, not just Tilly, although she is remarkable. But I love Steph Flynn. She's my kind of woman, and I know in one of the readings it was when she was being very heavily pregnant and whatnot, and I said, "Oh God, that could have been me when I was." I just, I just love her. Where so this is going to be a question for me. This is evolving into: Did you grow up in a household of women? Were you surrounded by women when you were growing up? Because you do seem to get the differences and the quirks, and the, and especially understand the relationships that friendships that men and women can have without the complications of anything else. I um, my 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 dad died when I was fourteen, and yeah. So I was then in a house full of women. I had my two younger sisters, uh, Liz Nipperis, who was trying to blag away, as <laughs> and, and Helen, and my mum. So right. yeah. for three or four years, I, I was in a, a house of women and all, all the problems that sort of, or all, all, all the dynamics of the, the yeah. things, and we didn't always get on as brothers and sisters. Um, but I joined the army when I was 16, and my mum thought that was because I wanted to get out of the house. And that wasn't. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, the reality is, my, my friend uh, Nick, uh, my, my, my best friend from school, was going to join the army one day. He, he mm-hmm. was recruiting off this, and he just said, "Do you fancy coming?" Um, so I did, and the wily recruiting sergeant says, "You here? You might as well take the test." And I ended up joining, and and, and Nick didn't. I mean, that's so yeah. I, I hadn't planned to, to to sort of run away, but. 
Um, so yeah, I, I, I've, I, I've always had women friends as well. I, I sort of don't just hang around exclusively it, with. It shows. It yeah, shows and, that. And, and I, I went through when I was in the army. There was pretty much no females in the army when I when I when I was in. Yeah. And when I was in probation, um, I was in probation for sixteen years. That was very much a female dominated profession. Uh -huh. And I was managing women because I, I I ended up managing the whole of Cumbria, so I was managing some pretty strong women managers because I was managing managers, yeah. managed managers sort of type. Yeah. Thing. Uh -huh. So I, I I got to sort of observe how because back because by then I was also writing as well. So anytime someone said something, I was oh I mean I'm having that. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, so I, I've I've been around strong women, which and I like writing strong women. In fact, for the fifth poll book, my editor says you need to put some men in it. You, you, <laughs> say women. <laughs> it's all about like women. We well, need to give Poe a sort of male ally every now and then because he just yeah. Uh, because it, in um in uh, the curator, there's a, a new um a new uh, di. Sorry, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I think she's a superintendent uh, called Joe Knight. Oh yeah, yeah. Who, who plays a key role in Dead Ground. Uh, he's uh, Poe ends up working for, for the security with, with the security services. He ends up being teamed up with another woman. Then uh, a woman called Hannah Finch, who's another strong independent, uh -huh. in, in, independent, uh, we, 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 who doesn't take any any shit off Poe. Nobody takes any shit off Poe, really. really. I mean, he, he's, he's quite sub subjective, really. Um, subjugated, not subjective. Not that, I don't know. <laughs> um, so I, in the botanist, there's a, there's a journalist who they have to work with, and I'd originally written the character as a female in my system. Right. You, need to, you need to have a you need to have a man. Yeah. Back in it again. So. Oh, brilliant! No, it does. It it. It's unusual, I think, to see that depth of understanding of women sometimes from anybody. I, and I'm not going to tar male authors with it. I think sometimes it doesn't even come across that well with some female authors. But you have captured something really, really special, but something that I personally just really relate to, Mike. So thank you from me. Well, I mean, also what I do, and this is a, another sort of literary device, I only write through Poe's perspective. So all your, everything on the page is what Poe thinks. Yeah. So, um, I'm, I'm never writing from a pe apart from the very first chapter of the puppet show when I actually write a scene from Tilly's perspective when she's wondering whether to call Steph Lynn or not when she's discovered that <laughs> thing on, on the um, computer. Mm -hmm. So I, I never actually have to get inside the female head too much. It's yeah. always what Poe is seeing, which is um, a get out, of, get out of jail free card, I suppose. Um, and yeah. some people say, oh, you don't like this, you don't like that. And I'm saying, no, you're wrong. Poe doesn't like this and Poe doesn't like that. Yeah. Someone, they, someone had a go at me the other day. They sent me an email saying uh, um, that I'm, I'm very mean about Muncaster Castle because I, I was rude about Muncaster Castle in Body Breaker, the second fluke book. I said, uh -huh. I said no, I'm not. I, I used to go yeah. there and do the owl things, you know, and land on your hand. and like. Eat. Oh, right, falconry um, stuff. I said, Fluke doesn't like Muncaster Castle. He thinks it's ridiculous. So, I mean, uh -huh. you can't confuse me with my characters. <laughs> is is the my get out of jail free card anytime? Yeah, oh, no, that's, that's a good one to use. That's a good one to use. Uh, right, I'm just going to go through. Let's just see. Do you think that readers' tastes change with time, given that your earlier books did not receive the acclaim that they are now? I I, I don't think that's. Well, I, I think they do because there's trends, isn't there? So I mean, there was. Yeah. There was strong trend for um, the girl on the train type things and there was a lot mm -hmm. of psychological stuff that sort of seemed to have faded away but, um, then yeah. the, Scan the Scandi books made yeah. a, a big thing and they sort of mm -hmm. peaked and they haven't really dropped down they're, st they're still there but yeah. um, the big thing at the minute is Outback Crime <coughs> books set in the sort of Australian bush yes. the readers yeah. face do change over time but the reality was I'm with a big publisher now and I was with yeah. a small publisher before my mm -hmm. the my publisher now has a big marketing budget, and I have mm -hmm. a um, I've got a publicist, I've got a marketing woman, I've got an editor, I've got an assistant editor, I've got a line editor, I've got a copy editor, I've got a desk <laughs> editor, I've got more, all these people, and there's yeah. other people like account managers and things. All so when when I go there and I meet the team, half of them I don't I I, I don't know, but when I was with Cafe Nights, it was a one man yeah. band, so he he tried as best he could to do everything. Yeah, and it was 
so so my writing has evolved over time, particularly as I've been edited by different editors and I've picked up things mm-hmm. here and there. Um, so I, I I don't know if readers have changed, which is why more I'm getting more people reading me now. I think it's just yeah. the case I was with a very small independent publisher, and now I'm with so I, 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 I'm with the same publisher that published J.K. Rowling. I mean, it's yeah. the Robert mm-hmm. Galbraith books. Ooh. Mark Dillon, <laughs> Val, I mean, the guy who does. Val McDermott's books, books yeah. does my book covers, a guy called Sean, oh, incredibly, uh-huh. incredibly talented fella. Yeah, so he is. At my last launch in London that he missed his train back and it cost him 60 quid in a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, never mind. <laughs> I've, I've, got to, I've, I've got a question. That, that question was from David Gilchrist, but I've got one from TG who writes as TK Gearing. She's a writer in her own in her own right. Oh, God, there's an awful lot of rights there. And I've got to ask you this with a very serious face. How do you deal with fame, with the fame that surrounds you now? Do you know, do you know I, I, <laughs> I, I, I suspect, apart from the, the absolute most famous authors in the world, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say people like J.K. Rowling, um... And possibly that's it. Most mm-hmm. authors don't get recognised, and I, I know this to be true because in November two thousand eighteen, I think I got invited yeah. to be a guest lecturer on a saga cruise, um, and it was basically a free cruise for two weeks, uh-huh. and I had to do two forty-five minute lectures. On the first one was on how to write a crime thriller. Fair enough. The second one was what whatever I wanted. So to kill a bit of time, I thought I'd flash up some really famous authors and say, who is that? Who is that? Uh-huh. Yeah, I flashed up Anne Cleves, Van McDermott, Ian Rankin, Lee Child, David yeah. Bondacci, um, some huge authors, and very few people knew what they looked like. So authors aren't the sort of rock stars that perhaps they think they are. Although I do get recognised every now and then in Carlisle. Someone actually had um, wanted a selfie by the fish counter in Morrison's Last year, that was a bit weird. Um, <laughs> just walking along with my like, trolley like nine o'clock in the morning, like sleeping my eyes. Isn't it? So, the fish wasn't it as well, was it? <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's nice to get, um, it's nice to get a small amount of recognition. And at festivals, uh, particularly Harrogate and the, the bigger ones, uh, it's nice to meet readers, particularly the yeah. ones that, you've, that I've spoken to online for a lot of time mm-hmm. and, and, and things like that, to meet them in the, in the, in the, um, in the flesh. But also, it, it's particularly weird. Where I was at Capital Crime last year, and yeah. this reader came out, and she just got incredibly flustered and, and just couldn't speak. And it was, um, oh. it was, it was like, <laughs> and I was like, well, Joanne's going, well, he's just, he takes the bins out and he, he does like, he, He's like an idiot and all that stuff. So it's 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 bizarre. It's bizarre. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, I, I mean, my, my best friend um, is called Crawford, and he's um, he's very good at keeping me down. Keeping keeping me down. I have I have noticed so is my that. Wife, actually, I mean, no, I'm not allowed <laughs> to get away with having an ego. It's it's, it's funny. No airs and graces. None of that. Mike, we are marching on with time. It's five to eight. We did start a little late, so we can go over a wee bit, but I don't want you to miss out any more questions that you've got to ask tonight. Okay, Was there anything I'll, else you wanted I'll, to do? I'll, I just don't I'll, want to I'll, run out of time. I'll whip through a few more. Um, Let's do some last bits of competition in this hand. Um, right, so a couple of Poe uh, flute books here. So two questions. What is Poe's favourite food? That should be quite an easy one. And what university did Tilly go to at the age of 13? Ooh, um, good questions. Right, what's this one? All right. Um, what is the name of the mark carved into the third victim in the puppet show? That's for an advanced copy of the creator. Oh, but it's not an advanced copy now because it's out. Um, <laughs> a big um, floppy copy. <laughs> right, this is the last one because we are running out of time. Um so I suppose this is for the this is out for a while. This is the new this is the new puppet show. This is a hard, the hardest question I think. Um, what is Stephanie Flynn's romantic partner called? Just Ooh, the good first question. name because I don't know a second name either. Right, we've got an answer to Tilly's university, and that is from a scientist specialist, Senga. She's no, come up with Cambridge. Is no, that right? Wrong. No, that's wrong. <gasps> Senga, that's wrong. Yeah, right. 
Oh, now somebody said Oxford, but I'm not getting the member's name, unfortunately. It's just coming up as Facebook user again. Yeah. Tilly Oxford. Ah. Oxford is right, anyway. It is Oxford. Oh, that could have got so many people writing Oxford. Oh, my goodness. I can't keep track of that. Hundred Still, God, 261 comments and climbing, and I'm missing them all. We will sort it. Oh, somebody said sausages for Poe. Yeah, yeah. We'll give that to Cumberland Sausage, but we'll... Caroline, I don't know if you can tell me any of the names who got those two right. Oh, bless him. <coughs> this is uh, oh, you wanted to see Bracken, who, who was my real-life Edgar. Oh, he's gorgeous. How old is he, Mike? He's 12. He's just had an eye operation as well. So he's, um, ah, that's why the cone of shame was that. Oh. <laughs> right. Well, Claire Conley, you won with the sausages answer. That was Claire Conley. Caroline's very kindly passed that on to me. So we just need to find out who said Tilly and Oxford because I couldn't see. I don't know what it is with this. It just takes out. Oh, that was Sergit. Perek won that one. Well done, Sergit. And I the first one, which is a big one, I suspect, but Nike, this won't be out for a while. What is uh, Flynn's partner called? All right, that's that. the last one. I've got St Steve come up, but I don't think that's the right answer. No, she's um, <laughs> she's she's gay, so that would. Um, <laughs> that's what I was answer. thinking. It could be Stevie, I suppose, but it, it's it's. Oh, it might be Steve at the weekends. Who knows? <laughs> We've got an answer of Zoe, but I cannot yeah, that's see right. who right. the answer was. But Anya is oh, Anna's over the moon to see Bracken. That much oh, I have okay, picked excellent. up whilst trying to read comments, so I did I see that. Anya. Right. Oh, that was Rose Evans with the answer, Zoe. Okay. So well Rose, Rose. You got that one. Well done. We just need to confirm who the Tilly and Oxford. I just couldn't see the name for that one. That's the last one we're waiting on there. I think Caroline said it was Sergit. Oh, was that Sergit? Yes, it was, wasn't it? Sorry. God, my mind's going. I need to drink more beer. Do you have any more questions, Mike, that you want to anything? Was there anything else your end? I've always got a few more questions here, so but I don't want to get in the way of any competition questions. No, no I, 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 I mean, I've got some. I mean, that were just for little bit of flimsy things. I'll, I'll, I'll just drop them into the Crime Rock Club. Um, That's fine. Over the next couple of things. So, I mean, no. The main one That's I'll okay. Well, I just, if I can, just ask you some last couple of questions from people here. Uh, let's see. Linda Hill was very brave and said, you have to choose Tilly or Poe. Oh. oh, that was a bit easy. It was. That surprised me how easy that was, Mike. If, My I, if, I, killed, if I killed off Poe, then who would tell the story? It's all told from Poe's point of view. Well, that's true. That's true. That is true. Let's see. I've got some other... I mean, uh, before long, I think it will become known as the Poe and Bradshaw series. I mean, it's, it, I think it's inevitable. Um, yeah. The rest, the rest of the You're characters are sort of flitting around their orbits with certain... Things. Certain degree, aren't they? Because I, I, nice. I was a bit mean to people in Black Summer because I kept I held Tilly back from when yeah. I stirred the book, and I did that intentionally. Um, uh huh. And just because, just to build up the tension, I was like, "Where's Tilly? When's Tilly going to come? And when's Tilly going to come?" Yeah. When the creator, she's in from the start. In Dead Ground, she's in from the start, and her first line in the botanist is, "Poe, why, why would somebody want to buy my toenails?" <laughs> So she's in it right from the start then as well. <laughs> With a good old mic opener. I don't know. Let me just see. I did see some others. Uh, okay, somebody, Fiona Jane actually said about the first chapter of Black Summer made me feel physically sick. I think a lot of us will know what that is. And other chapters made me laugh out loud. Does that make you happy? Do you have a tick list keeping the balance right? Because you're not um, overly gory in your books. It's only no, really where no, it's... Um, there, isn't I mean, there? there is a lot of gore, but it's sort of after the fact. And I, I know oh. Fiona Jane. She's um, Her husband actually is in a band played at our wedding. Um, ah! She... Yeah, I mean, she sort of hit the nail on the head. I mean, the, the fact that there's humour in it allows me to go a bit darker than I would would know if yeah if, if they didn't have the humor in the books would actually be quite dark 
quite depressing reads, I, th I, I think. So the, 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 the sort of humour and the banter between Poe and Tilly allows me to do things I could po probably not put... I can push it a bit further. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you've read The Creator. The ending is very, very dark. Mm. And I intentionally wrote a light tone all the way through just so I can punch in the face at the end with, with this quite dark ending which which is a uh, uh, horrific i mean i was, I was speaking to mick heron actually the, one of the yeah best authors in the world at harrogate probably two years ago and he said uh -huh. what you're writing now and i said i'm writing the third poem but this is what i'm thinking i'm doing for the end and he, he says you're sick <laughs> <laughs> all right and then, when when joanne was reading it um because she proved yeah. everything before it goes um even to my agent, she said, What's yeah, wrong with you? when she got to the end. <laughs> All Did right, she sleep good. in a separate room for a while after that, Mike? <laughs> well, I, don't know. I mean, I've been probably, she probably, she probably went glad being asleep. If I'd gone to sleep before she went to sleep, <laughs> there was another question came in similar along the lines from group member Gillian Little. I just managed to crack get her name. She said, If you could only have one detective, would it be Poe or Fluke? Um, it would be Poe, and that's. From a purely financial point of view, really, I mean, Poe pays pays the bills. Um, he, he, I, I have a soft spot for Fluke, obviously. Um, a, yeah. He's, he, my mum died a couple of years before the, the book came out, um, and I rewrote his first name to be Averson, which is her middle name. So yeah. I've got a soft spot for but Poe pays the bills. So you've got to be pragmatic. Yeah, about, true. About it. I, I, I would like to finish off the trilogy. The, the flute trilogy one day, as I, as I said, but yeah, it really is a, a, a case of finding the, the time now. Yeah, if your, your it, friend, I'm sure that I'm sure Little Brown will, will publish it, which, which yeah, and I'm sure we'll read it as well. So, why not? And talking about other things, your friend Simon Cowdroy has asked, Would yeah. you write a, would you write a Terry Pratchett type comic fantasy? I'm already 70,000 words into it, as it happens, um, Simon. And I'm not actually joking. It's called Buckle Jones and the Sarcastic Shrunken Head. Um, and it ah. started out as a YA, and it's now morphed into a sort of more adult-type comedy. It's pretty much uh -huh. unpublishable. And it's sort of my hobby <laughs> project that I write when, I, when I'm not actually writing anything else, and I just need to uh -huh. write something. Um, yeah. I, I haven't touched it for about a year because I've been so busy with, with, with Poe and all that type of things. So I absolutely mm -hmm. would, um, because he put me on to Jasper, foreign sort of Norwegian-y type name, Fjord, something, you write, the, you write these wacky books about people, the, yeah. the literary book detectives and things, huge fun. Um, so Simon and I have very similar tastes in, in, in books. Oh, cool. Caroline's just let me know, because even she's having trouble keeping up with the, the stream of comments. But she's just let me know that there are quite a few questions on the stream about the possibility of a Tilly solo. Had you thought about that? I've, I've been asked a few times. I, I think possibly okay. in a short story. I, I have, I've got this idea, um, and I spoke to my agent about it, where Tilly's kidnapped, um, <laughs> tied up in a sort of cellar somewhere. And the reason no. that I thought it'd be quite cool to have Poe sort of desperately yeah. searching for her. But then uh -huh. it might actually be quite even cooler for Tilly for to be told from Tilly's, Tilly's perspective. And yeah. she is getting on her captor's nerves by asking so by correcting <laughs> you've you've tied the wrong knot, that type of yeah. thing. Behind, behind <laughs> my back. So I have thought about it, yeah. Um maybe when we come around for the next round of short stories it'll be quite a quite a fun I think thing it would, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think it would be an interesting I don't. I don't know how. The, the the third short story that's out in September is yeah. Not told from Edgar's point of view, but Edgar is the the sort of the star of the show. That's um, right. Because I remember Jeannie asking about that in the group Jeannie Feast in Australia, and you did say to her that there would be one of the short stories would be very much an Edgar story, didn't you? So Edgar being the spring <laughs> spaniel, just in case people people don't know who he is. <laughs> Uh, quick question about audio books. Uh, you may, you may, oh, you may have been. Are you still there, Mike? Yeah, I'm still there. Oh, that's all right. I think Caroline just popped offline. It went a bit strange then. It was about uh, how do you choose who reads the audio version, or does the publisher recommend someone? They they recommend. Um... 
I, I was in Sainsbury's actually, and I, I got um, sent a load of links through for John Banks saying this is who we think will be go a good match for your books. Um, uh -huh. Can you can yeah. you? Can you can you have a listen to what he's done? And they sent me some links to sort of extracts. I think one was War of the Worlds and one yeah. had been a Doctor Who. Um, so I thought, yeah, absolutely great. Um, then they asked me if I was happy to have him with on the Fluke series as well. It's very clear that I didn't have to because it was a new series and if I wanted to go in the yeah. direction. But <clears throat> I've enjoyed the way he's, he, he sort of interpreted the Poe books, so I was happy to have him with the flute books as well. And Brilliant. He, actually, he acts as like a final safeguard, actually, because he spotted a major plot flaw in the um, the first uh, bur in Burial Gown, the first flute book, because uh -huh. I had rewritten it. Yeah. Uh, I had to rewrite a part of it because I sort of cheated and used one, one of the plot points in The Curator. So I got to yeah. write a big chunk of it, and my uh -huh. very clever solution, which which involved the guitar, uh -huh. which involved the, which way the strings, the bass strings, uh, are right. on the guitar, I got completely the wrong way around. And he he actually said, "You do realize uh -huh. this? Uh, we had about six hours to get the typeset changed, otherwise the, the book would have went out as it was oh. completely wrong." Bass oh, that. gosh! Now I doubt people. I'm, we're going to have to wind up soonish, I think, Mike, but. Oh, people will have noticed your tattoos. And Cameron Kinnell has asked, what tattoo does Poe have? And does Tilly have any? And if not, what would she have? Would she have an ampersand? <laughs> um, I absolutely think Tilly would be dead against tattoos. And, and <laughs> I, I, you know, I've never been asked that. <laughs> well, I've there you go. I, well I, done, Cam. If Poe was gonna have a tattoo, I think it would be a tattoo of the Black Watch um, from when he when he yeah. when he served. Um, I've got. I mean, my favourite tattoo is probably that one, which my uh -huh. wife, which is the um, it's a Terry Pratchett tattoo. Um, All right. I got that from the fiftieth. Uh, if Tilly were to have a tattoo, um, I think it would be a Neil deGrasse Tyson quote or something like that. It would be something uh -huh. that wouldn't make any sense or something. It would just be a series of <clears throat> random slashes that only about seven or eight people in the world would understand <laughs> what they are. I think so. I think that probably would be it. I think I've almost... Oh, I've got one question. I won't forgive myself if I don't ask you this on behalf of Mel Owalabi because Mel works in a library and she yes, yes, would I, want I, to I, ask, I, do I, you I, use I, libraries? Do yeah. you use libraries for your research? Not so much for research, but I, I, I do in the libraries quite a lot. Just just because I, yeah, I like being around books. And I like to see if my books are in or out. And I do li a lot of library events. Um, I just go around and just stand in front of, of people who the people who go to library events. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'll just talk nonsense for half an hour, 45 minutes. <laughs> But I've I've been at some really good library events. I, I, I've yeah. seen John Connolly, I've, I've seen Peter Robinson, some really decent authors of of uh -huh. Carlisle to, to to the library there. So yeah, I mean they're a very important part of of the um of of, of the sort of writing world. I mean the the integral. I mean so yeah, but like like research wise, I mean the internet now and because. I, I, I'm, I've sort of got a higher profile now, so I, I, I'm I'm more confident approaching experts mm. in their field, saying I've got this. Yeah, I've got this issue. So I mean, I contacted somebody who worked for the Royal Observer Corps for uh -huh. like, some of he gave me all sorts yeah. of like anecdotes which I could which I could use in the book, all that type of stuff. So it's mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I mean libraries. I mean the, the life of the communities. I mean they were like the local pub, weren't they? I mean, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, they're still important. I think loads of people are just wondering how they're going to operate now when they do reopen. But that's yeah. another question for another time, unfortunately. I'm going to ask you one last question, Mike, because I don't want to keep you forever, although it is your party. but <laughs> And you can cry if you want I mean, to. But there we go. I was about to say it was a from Pauline Render Byron, and it, it is a good one. Pauline has asked, if someone annoys you in real life, would you be tempted to cause them untold misery and pain in your books? Using different names, of course. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I do it. 
yeah, you can't help it, particularly when you, you're thinking of uh, not so much the villains, but you know, the sort of officious dickheads that are, that crop up in the books. So uh-huh. th- there's there's one character um, in in Black Summer, I think. I will describe her as being squat with fat arms, and that was very <laughs> what clearly you say that. my my revenge against someone who I didn't get on with at work. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I couldn't use their surname because I'd already used it as a, a victim. Um, in the, you really uh, didn't like the, this I'd, person. I'd, I'd, I'd burnt them alive in the in the public. <laughs> My, my copy editor, who keeps an eye on these things, said you can't just use this surname. Every, every time you want to punch a bag, you can't just keep on using this surname. I do. But it all, also, it's a lot of fun. So my, 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 my friend Crawford Bunny, I described him as having um, long simian arms and oh, like um, a hairy back and, and just so you, you can have a laugh. Normally, I, uh, um, I ask permission. So I, I've got a, a story coming out at some point with, with you, David, and... Um, uh, David Gilchrist and, and and someone else, and I've killed David. Um, yeah, I think <laughs> you're going to be investigating his murder, so that'll be that'll be quite interesting. Mm, I'm going to look so, yeah, forward. You, to... The opportunities are, are sort of, but you, you can't you can't get you can't get too close, otherwise you can actually you could actually be sued for um for for libel. I mean, it's just yeah. um, that that is a fact. Yeah. Oh God, and we don't want that, do we? And I don't but want to upset a, 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 an author friend of mine. Was re- released the book and I, I and I saw it at Harrogate and I, I said how how's how's your, your book going? So it's been sort of good and bad. Um, and I said go on then. and she said well they're good it's done really well I'm with a big publisher released in hardback blah blah. blah. I said go on what's the bad? She said well I'm being sued because the the main oh, sort of villain in the character is. Um, uh-huh. So soon made the same that is they I've basically used their character. Uh, so I, right. th- this person is saying that the, the author had just written the character mm-hmm. as is, and I said that's awful. I said the worst thing is uh, it's my dad. <laughs> <gasps> um, but then she said, dad, don't get any ideas. <laughs> then, then she said, but the thing is, for him to prove that I have um, libeled, is it libel or slander? I think it's libel in when it's written, isn't it? Um, oh. Which way round it is? He said he will have to actually demonstrate that he has all these negative characteristics. So, so it's a win-win thing. Yeah. Because you have to go in court and say I am a dickhead. <laughs> um, but it was it was it was one of those like. Uh? That is going to be the weirdest thing ever. That is just bizarre. That is just bizarre. We're at quarter past eight, Mike. Do you want to go and have a few more beers? <laughs> well, I'm going to have my tea, yeah, but um, it's been You've fun. been ever so good I've, today. No, I've You've been, not been, been great fun. I'm You've not been once. drunk. <laughs> Sorry, say that again. I'm, I haven't swore once, I don't think. No, the worst we've had is dickhead, and there we go. I've said it as well, so we're as bad oh, as yeah, each other. Yeah. There you we go. It, you said it louder. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Sorry about that. I should behave myself. Um just one thing, Mike, before we shut off, I've been made aware that a few people have been asking about how they'll claim their prizes from you. So maybe if you could pop something in the group or something I will, before you... Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll speak to Caroline yourself, find out who it is, and I'll contact them and get their addresses, and I'll, 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 I'll send something off um, next week sometime. Lovely. So I hope that puts everyone's questions there. We'll get that sorted out. Don't worry. Mike, thank you ever so much for asking me to do this for you. It's been a joy. I just Mike, hope one day I'll do I, it. It's been such a privilege to allow the UK Cram Book Club to, to host this. It really has. It's been fun, a lot of fun. Oh, good. I'm glad you've enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. I hope I've done you proud, my dear, because it yeah, has been I'm an sure. honour. I look forward to the day when we can actually meet in person, Mike. Yes, I'm yes. going to come up to Cumbria and I'm going to expect you all to take me out for a drink. There we go. <laughs> Oh, we certainly owe you one, Lucy. <laughs> it's been brilliant, but enjoy the rest of your night. Go and put Thank your you. feet up with Joe. I hope Mum-in-law Mary enjoyed it. Simon, it was good to hear you. Hope Dad, if you are still with us, that you enjoyed it. Thank you, everyone. And keep an eye out for the post from Tamsin Rosewell. She will be giving you the extra clues for Craven Cluedo. So each day. <laughs> no, it's great. It's a great hashtag, though. Hashtag Craven Cluedo. Tamsin will be posting those, so keep an eye out for posts from her in the group, and she will keep you updated about a few other things that uh, about the signing that Mike was talking about earlier. 
So uh, that's it, everyone. Thank you for joining us at home. We've had some great viewing figures, and it's just been a thrill. I'm going for a lie down now. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Enjoy your trooper. Thanks so much, Lucy. Thank you. All right. Cheers. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.